Hi there, I'm Scott, and this is Great Scott Knitting, a podcast blog thingy, um, and welcome to episode 23. I am coming to you from Wichita, Kansas, where one year ago on Memorial Day, I sat down on my front porch and recorded the first of my YouTube presence um, and joined this wider fiber community. Up to that point, I was pretty much, um, well, I felt like a lone knitter in a world of knitters. Um, I knew there were other male knitters. I knew there were lots of uh, uh, knitters in the world, of course, but I had never really been part of a group, part of a, a um, felt like a part of a collective, you know, I just always knit on my own. And this brought me into being in a world that feels much more wide, like I'm much more connected to other knitters and that, other male knitters, especially. Um, but, you know, it, it kind of changed my perspective a little bit. Um, and a lot of that is due to the other podcasters out there, those that I discovered over this past year uh, being at home, um, needing some uh, entertainment, um, and uh, actually quite a bit of education, um, that I was able to find many of you over this past year um, and get to know you to some extent through your podcasts and your blogs and your communications out into the world. Um, and I hope that maybe over this past year, um, those of you who are returning viewers have gotten to know me a little bit. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate your support um, and, and that you're here watching. Um, to those of you that are new and just discovering this podcast, thank you for coming to check it out. I hope you like it, um, and I hope you come back. Um, today is Sunday, no, it's not Sunday, it is Monday. It feels like a Sunday, but it is a Monday, May 31st, Memorial Day, 2021, um, where today here in Wichita, Kansas, it has been cool, like 60 degrees has been high, and rainy, like real rainy, not just kind of grizzly rainy, but like this morning was, full on pouring cats and dogs call the pet store order two of everything kind of rain um yeah so um so today i am celebrating my first year pada vlaga thingy anniversary and um so to do that i am instituting my first ever craft along um, I guess that's one of those things that podcasters sometimes will do. So what the hell? I'll try it. Let's see how it works out. Um, so I'm doing a knit along, crochet along, um, craft along, however you will. Um, but uh, I do have some parameters. Um, so it starts today um, or whenever you happen to watch this, uh, as long as it's uh, anywhere from the very last day of May of 2021, and it will end on July 31st of 2021. Um, knitters, here's the deal. Choose a pattern by Josh Ricks Rabinsky. Um, I happen to think he's a really brilliant shawl designer. Um, he has some really beautiful things. And let me just, let me just quickly show you um, some of the stuff that's out there that I just think is, is brilliant. Um, so here he has like 95 designs um, of shawls out here. Um, I've knit only a couple of them. Um, I think a total of three, maybe four um, that I just think are, I, 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 I find them really interesting. They're fun to knit. They're really relatively easy. Um, I would maybe put them on the easy to moderate um, scale. Um, relatively traditionally sized. They're not 
They don't tend to be schlankets, although some of them are good sized shawls. Um, but they are so much fun to knit. They are uh, uh, interesting that you can play with color and um, and still have a lot of fun knitting it. So there are lots of lovely shawls to choose from. Um, I don't think he has any anything else. I mean, he has maybe some cowl type things. Oh, yeah, there is a cowl. But yeah, mostly just shawls, um, which I find very interesting, quite lovely. Um, I do hope to knit more of them along the way. Um, my official selection for uh, this knit along is going to be the Thrive. Um, I think it's a lovely, uh, a, a nice looking shawl. It's uh, a three color shawl in DK, um, I believe. Yes, in DK. Uh, good thing, because that's the, that's the yarn I picked up. Um, so um, that's, that's that for, for us knitters. If you're a crocheter, um, I don't know who, he doesn't do any crochet patterns. So if you uh, want to play along, feel free. Choose some kind of a shawl pattern uh, that you like that is two to three colors and go for it. Um, or you know what, it could even be a blanket. I don't care. Uh, I don't know enough about crochet to be able to say, do this and you'll love it because um, I don't crochet. So uh, do what makes you happy. And for that matter, knitters do what makes you happy too. I would just love it if you would um, choose a pattern by Josh Rickshabinski and play along in that fashion. Um, okay, so to play along, post your um, objects to Instagram at hashtag Great Scott Knitting um, KAL 2021. Um, I know it's kind of long, but it, you know, it makes it quite unique. Um, that hashtag I will put in the show notes down below so you can grab that there. Um, maybe I'll see if I can find a way to put it somewhere along here um, so that you can see that as well. Um, or you can also go to my Ravelry uh, group page whatever that, I think they're called groups, yeah, my Ravelry group page, and uh, post to that as well, uh, or instead, which whichever you prefer. Um, I will put a link to that in the show notes as well, so that you can go grab that, and, and or put stuff in there. Um, cool. So right now, as a prize, um, I plan on coming up with something more, but at this point, what I'm going to to donate as a prize will be um, some of my hand-dyed yarn. Um, I don't know what exactly I'm going to put in there, but I'm going to put in some hand-dyed yarn. Um, and just in case you want to know what some of these things look like, these are not necessarily what I am choosing as my options. I'm just grabbing things off the shelf of all things that I have dyed. Um, so these are just some various things to give you a sense of my what I do. So um, if you you know if you're interested in grabbing one of these, um, cool, that'd be great. Um, so there. So there done it. I instituted a knit along, crochet along, craft along. Um, I suppose if you want to spin, go for it. It's just make it a colorful yarn. Um, so there we go. Um, so it has been a little over two weeks since I've put anything out. And you would think that in that two week period of time, I would have really accomplished a lot of stuff. And um, I haven't. I've been working. I have been 
dealing with taxes, dealing with a graduating senior from high school, um, which is always fun. Does your nose ever itch? Other podcasters, do you ever get on and your nose just begins to start itching like mad? And all you want to do is just like take sandpaper to it. Uh, right now, that's what's happening to me. And I don't know what's going on. Um, so hang on one second. I've got to just scratch my nose. Better. Um, also, my allergies have just been crazy this year. And maybe that's slowing me down too. Um... Okay, so then let's talk what I have been doing. I did get my, where are they? Oh, there they are. I did get my May socks done. Oh, and you'll notice I have sock blockers. Check it out. I am so thrilled. Um, anyway, so here are my May socks. Take a look at that pattern. I just absolutely love this yarn. It was so much fun to knit. Um, it's a lovely, lovely yarn. The yarn is Arcania Yarns Huasco Sock in the colorway of Valparaiso. And I just, I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to dye a skein of yarn that does this. It is absolutely beautiful. I think I have a sense of what they did, but I'm nowhere near good enough yet to be able to reproduce something like that. But anyway, May socks, done. Um, they're lovely. They fit. The pattern, for those of you who are interested, is the Sockmetician's Toe Ups by Nathan Taylor. And yeah, I... I love it. I love knitting toe up. I don't have to worry about the, the heel because I don't have to pick up stitches. I don't have to have no hole gaps. My nose is still itching. Um, driving me crazy. Um, so yeah, those are, that's the, oddly enough, in all of May. No, I got something else done in May. I finished up the other um, Josh Ricks Rabinsky shawl. Um, which I completed, which was the color strike in May. But that was it. I did the th that pair of socks and a shawl. That was all I knit this year, uh, or in this May month. Um, gosh, I just feel like, where have, what have I been working on? Um, so what have I been working on? Okay, I have been designing, and I think maybe that's what took up a lot of my time this month, was I had to come up with, and I knit, do I have that? I knit a little test thing. Um, so my neighbor's son is a Methodist minister. Um, on the um, liberal side of the Methodist divide. And he has asked me to do a liturgical stole um, that is rainbow. Um, he has a couple of weddings he is doing later in the summer for a couple of couples that happen to be same sex in their uh, love connection. So um, he wanted a rainbow liturgical stole. And I was like, okay, sure. Um, so I started with a prototype but my husband was like uh the order of the colors is kind of weird is doesn't quite work and i kind of had to agree with him um so i'm going with sort of the progressive pride colors which is the of course the traditional rainbow but in addition to that there is the transgender and the black and brown for people of color and those lost to HIV AIDS. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm reimagining how that goes uh, together. And so I re-mapped out how the colors are gonna flow, and they're gonna flow kinda like that. So, 
I am this far on one leg. So I've made it to orange um, from my purple. And on my other leg, I'm also there. So I'm getting ready to go into red. And then um, from red, I can't remember where I'm going. I think it's black and white now. What did I write? Oh, yeah. Red, black, brown, then um, light blue, um, pink, and then white at the top. And then the white is going to connect it around the back into a, a, like a V liturgical connection in the back. So that's how that's going. Um, the pattern I am knitting that in is a um, slip stitch, waffle stitch type of thing. So it will lay very nice and flat. It's in fingering weight, which is making it take some time. And by the way, it's going to be a little over 100 inches long, all told. It's going to be 50 inches down one side, 50 inches down another side, the other side, and then, of course, there's the back. Um, so, yeah. Good thing is he is like 6'5", and very broad shoulder. So... I'm not worried about it being too long at all. If anything, I was a little bit worried about it being short because, you know, those liturgical stoles are about, you know, three to four, three to five inches wide, and then they, like, go down beyond the knee. Him being so tall, that means uh, a, a lot of extra knitting. So I had to come up with that, and then I knit that whole entire prototype, and then I was like, nope, this isn't going to work. Start that over. Oh, and I also hand dyed all of the color. So there was that. So I've been busy. I've been doing things. Really, I have. Um, just not a lot of stuff is finished. Um, I have. I, I want to try and get this done in June, Pride Month, um, to be able to give it to him at that point. Um, so yeah, yeah. That is that. Um, so in, I, I, I did a little review. Um, I was curious how much have I done over this past year? And in the past year, since I started this podcast, I have completed 38 knitting projects, which was two hats, four scarves, six cowls, seven pairs of socks, and 19 shawls. I have published four patterns. And I have dyed up more skeins of yarn than I can count. And all of it has been from me. The yarn that I've dyed. At least at this point, I'm, I, might, I might start tossing it out. Keeping in mind that my early dyeing was all with food coloring, Kool-Aid, um, that type of thing. This shawl is the first shawl that I completed after starting this podcast using the first ever yarn that I dyed. So I'm wearing it for that. It is the uh, Unwind Shawl by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. It's a lovely, it, I really do enjoy it and it, it did enjoy knitting this. I would knit this again. In fact, I might even redo these skeins, these colors these this was kool-aid um and the yarn is um dyer supplier 7525 fingering um so this is the kit that i got last may from knit crate um when they were having so much trouble uh getting their yarn in they decided to do it uh do it yourself and this was my do-it-yourself. I think it turned out lovely. I think it's pretty. I like it. Um, so there. By the way, Knit Crate's still having troubles getting their yarn. So is Dyer Supplier. Oh my gosh. They have like nothing in stock. And they're doing only like uh, um, pre-orders. Not going to do pre-orders. So... What else do I have in um, this past 
week I did cast on. You know, everybody has been knitting. Like, like everybody. Well, not everybody, but a good portion of the vlog vlogiverse, YouTubeiverse, whatever. All you vloggers out there, everybody that I watch has been doing Vertices Unite, which I, it, quite a lovely piece, very interesting piece, and maybe someday I will do that. It just doesn't fit my current aesthetic I, concept. It's a little too disjointed for me. And maybe some point I will and totally embrace the disjoint. But um, so instead, I said, um, what the, I've been looking for. Oh, God, I'm getting all confused. Slow down. OK, so I had four skeins of, well, I had three skeins of BFL, 100% uh, Superwash BFL, that I didn't know what to do with. I had dyed them myself. They kind of, kind of, sort of went together. Kind of. But. I don't know. And then I found I was going through and reorganizing my my yarn and I found a fourth one. And it kind of fit in the colors. And so I looked at the patterns that I had available to me to me and boom, exploration station came to mind. And so here is the beginnings of my exploration station. I have this sort of teal blue, a sort of coral, peachy, pinky kind of thing going on. Um, this, of course, purpley color, which is actually quite variegated. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's just lots of pops of color in there as well. And then a variegated one with the pinks and blues. And it's very, very pastel. Um, so there we go that's what i'm doing with those uh skeins of bfl fingering boom dyed them myself I, I don't know they're not great in colors but i want to use them in something that i think because i think they deserve having some fun in the world and existing in something interesting um and i've always liked the exploration station i knit it once before about two years ago, probably. Anyway, I knit it in DK weight. <laughs> it's huge. Talk about schlank it. Damn, it is a big, it is a big shawl. Not particularly pretty though. I chose really bright, painfully bright colors that I don't know. One of these days I'll pull it out and show you. Uh, I don't know where it's at. Um I, hang on, hang on. Let me see if I can find it. So I could not find the, of course, I left open my closet. Um, I could not find the actual shawl. I have a feeling maybe it got gifted. I don't know. I'm not sure where it went. But anyway, here's what it looks like or looked like. I'm sure it still looks like this somewhere, wherever it is. Um, so I can, like, like I said, it's got very, very bright primary types of colors. Um, and it's just huge. You can see Spock, it just envelops him. There's no green. I, there, I'm serious. That's just simply because of the colors play that way. So, yeah, that was my original exploration station. Um, I'm redoing it in fingering weight this time. So that's fun. Um, so that's those are my whips. Um, so what am I casting on? I am casting on, of course, the Thrive Shawl. Um, Yes, so I'm casting on the Thrive Shawl in Universal Yarns Deluxe DK Superwash in these three colors. And 
So it's a gray, a sort of a royal blue, and a teal blue. Absolutely my favorite colors. Royal, royal blue and teal blue are my favorites. Um, so that's the shawl I'm casting on. And I'm going to put those on the needles today. Probably this evening after I get this thing uploaded. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, oh yes. The socks for June are also going to be my the toe up socks that I have learned to knit. It's the only the only pattern I have ever knit of socks. I'm going to stick with it. And the yarn I'm going to use is the Manos del Uruguay um, Alegria, which is a 7525 superwash merino polyamide blend. And the colorway is Cabaret. I just love the pinks and the blacks and the grays and the whites. So lovely. Okay, so this is significant. Um, the colorway is significant for me, or at least the colorway name, because there was a bar in Kansas City for many, many years. Um, probably all the years I lived there. Well, not all the years. Um, from the point that when I moved to Kansas City for probably about 20 years, there was a bar called the Cabaret. And yes, they played Cabaret every night before the drag queens came on. Oh, it's just so pretty. So much fun. Um, so it, it was my first neighbor, neighborhood gay bar because at one point I did live around the corner from it. Oddly enough, didn't go as often as you would think someone might if they lived around the corner from, really at the time, the premier gay bar in Kansas City. But, um, so, this is called Cabaret. It's pink and black. I have to knit some socks on it. I just have to. So, that's... Um, and it's the first time I've ever used Manos, uh, Manos, Manos del Uruguay. Gosh, terrible. Um, so there's that. So I'm going to knit up some socks using uh, that lovely skein of yarn um, in Cabaret. So, um, yeah, that'll be fun. So those are the two things I'm going to be casting on and going after in the month of June, be finishing up my liturgical shawl, shawl uh, stole, and exploration station. That's enough. That's a lot, considering that my knitting time is curtailed by, by actual work that pays. Um, and in addition to that, I'm getting into some other stuff <laughs> that... Um, might be taking up some of my free time. So, acquisitions, my sock blockers. Um, got my sock blockers. Got um, eighty. No, a lot, a lot more than that. 160 skeins of yarn. I think that sounds about right. From Knit Picks. Bear. A bunch of bear yarn. Um, I went back to Knit Picks. Um, I was at that point very much a Dire Supplier fanboy, but they just, they due to the pandemic and they have they have very um legitimate reasons for having supply issues um but because i wanted yarn now um i chose to go back to nitpicks which is also a very economical plus nitpicks was having a sale on their 20 packs 15 percent off of their 20 packs and I got my 
um, tax return because I got my taxes done in May before the official deadline. And so it was more than I expected, having been unemployed. Um, so um, I took a chunk of that money and said, I am getting some bare yarn and some dyes. So that's the other thing I got was about 24 two ounce jars of different Dharma acid dyes um, with some great suggestions from uh, some different indie dyers out there to help me choose some some colors that they believe are are d great go-tos for different things. And so th now this was not something I ordered, but um, nitpicks just threw in um, 50 grams of minis. So these are 10, 10 gram minis. Um, this one is fingering gloss yeah this is gloss they're uh it's a fingering weight 70 percent merino 30 percent silk so it's very pretty um and then the rest of them i think are just stroll nope there's okay so this one's gloss as well and then these three are stroll yes nope wrong that one's gloss and these are stroll okay i had it wrong so two in stroll. This one is, yeah. Then these three are gloss. No, I was wrong. There's three stroll, two gloss. Oh, my, my brain, I swear. Okay, either I'm getting old, which is true, I'm getting old. Or I'm just frazzled today. So... You might be wondering, why am I getting, why did I get so many skeins of yarn? Well, I'm thinking of actually selling some yarn to help support my dyeing habit. Um, so dye yarn so that I can sell yarn, so that I can buy more yarn and then dye more yarn of a vicious circle but i've got to tell you that dyeing yarn is really quite addictive and playing with color is very addictive um i used to be all about music and playing with sound and the sounds of different instruments and that at one point was a huge passion of mine when i was quite young um and then uh bills had to be paid and so I went into the workaday world and kind of never got back to the music world. And I guess this is kind of my way of wheezing my way back into the arts by being able to, of course, knit, which I think is a huge art. It's a craft, yes, but it's an art. Designing and, and then taking someone's design and executing it is very much like taking someone's composition and playing it. Um, so it, it's to me knitting crocheting um doing those types of things is very much like music uh and and creating music you're taking someone else's composition you're you're executing that composition into the world um so that's my uh that's how i view knitting now and dying is just yet another aspect of that um it's another expression of oneself out into the world but using color and fiber and combining those two things in different ways that then also then get combined with you know it's it okay so if do we go back to the music analogy and it's always dangerous to do to take things too far um but to, to kind of go back to that concept, a, a dyer, a spinner, someone who spins the yarn, someone who dyes the yarn, 
they to me are kind of like those who craft the instruments like violin makers or someone who crafts a clarinet out of out of the the ebony wood um reed makers um all of these folks take raw materials and turn them into the tools that are then used to produce the music produce the uh, shawls, the garments, the beautiful things that we make using the patterns. And the patterns are the composers. So there's there's my my blown out analogy uh, metaphorically how I see uh, knitting and the craft the the fiber crafting world and music being very much the same for me. Um, and I guess that's how I, why there's this passion I have for it because it's a it's, it's a way for me to express that aspect of that used to express itself through music now expresses itself more through um, the fiber world. Um. So yeah, that's what I have acquired. trying to see if, I found, if, if there was anything else uh, there is some additional ordering i have done um, um so i'll share those with you when those come in um they probably will ship this next week because that uh it was an indie dyer that i uh purchased some goods from him as a thank you for his um, guidance and and input into some of my uh, dying purchases. Um, okay, so what else have I been up to other than work, which I've been doing the work thing, um, teaching people the things that I teach them in the corporate world. And I have been, oh, I've been doing some dyeing. Um, so like, okay, so I've been playing with some colorways that I want to be able to throw into a shop and sell. Um, this is not one, but this is a prototype. This is a thought, a, a color play. Um, although I really need to, I, I like this. In fact, I would probably re- do this and sell it because I think it's really pretty. It's using just three different types of blue um, on a skein of yarn and letting them bleed and play with each other, uh, which I think is um, I think it plays it. It looks really nice together. Um, I've done several different tries at this this one has more white this one has less white has more of the blue color so they're very similar and then i have two others which are um again same same three colors just sort of playing with them in different ways to try and come up with a colorway that i want um but i've got it the thing is i'm doing this and then i'm all, like today i actually realized um i'm using the jacquard colors on these and going forward, I'm going to use the Dharma, so they're not going to be the same. So what am I doing trying to experiment? But then again, they're gorgeous. They're fun. They're pretty. These are on the Nomad 7525 Snowdrift base. And I got to tell you, I don't like it. Um, And the reason I don't like it is... Like, I feel this 7525, and it is super soft. Like, like you just want to pet it. This is much woolier. It's almost like it's, I, I question its merino um, bona fides. I really do. Um, it's, they say it's merino. I just, it doesn't have that, it doesn't have the same, it doesn't have the same softness to it. 
And so I'm wondering if there's a higher twist. I don't know. Is it the ply? No, it just it just doesn't feel as soft. It feels scratchier um, to me, and so I don't like it. It dyes nicely, um, but I just don't like the yarn. So, and that was another reason I was I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go to Nomad because Nomad has a good price point too. Um, but this is the I got a ten pack of their seventy five twenty five Superwash Merino, and I don't like it. So that's why I've gone back to nitpicks. Stroll fingering. Love it. It's absolutely soft. Um, it dies up beautifully. And um, yeah, I like it. And I also love their DK. Like I play I played with their DK before. And it it feels softer than that. So um, yeah, this is an old one of my one of my Kool-Aid experiments from back in the day. From last year, some point. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping, um, over at some point in the summer to open up an Etsy shop of some, uh, colorways that I'm going to carry forward for at least a little while. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind as I'll let you know when that happens. Um, okay. What else am I up to? Um, podcasts I've been watching. You know what? I watch tons of podcasts, and so I'm not going to like put them all in the list, but I am going to kind of highlight some that I have been enjoying of late. Um, so first off, I want to say thank you to Needles at the Ready. They yesterday they hosted a um, they hosted a crafters uh meet up on you on zoom and it was a lot of fun there was about 60 to 65 to 70 uh different crafters on on zoom and it was it was fun it was fun to listen to everybody and 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 chat a little bit um it was a little wieldy to have so many people there so there was a lot of people i think that um would be more vocal in smaller groups but that doesn't mean that it was not a, a good time uh which i think it was there were a lot of my favorite folks that were on um but uh so there was these guys and actually um during that session i did die this skein of yarn as i was working and actually i was working on another one that is still drying um so it's not it's not ready for prime time yet so um next i want to give a shout out to mace of skeins um she has been around a while um she's also she's a vlogger and knitter crocheter dyer crafter person extraordinaire out of texas and um she's been a, she's been around for a few years now on on youtube and i just discovered her to be quite honest and she's delightful she is funny she's got beautiful yarn and um yeah so if you haven't if you haven't uh, watched any of her uh, podcasts, uh, you should definitely go check out Mace of Skeins on YouTube. She's a lovely red-headed Texan, although with not much of a Texas accent, but she is a Texan. Um, okay, one cannot almost cannot mention Mace of Skeins without also mentioning Chevy Rell. Chevy Rell's stuff on YouTube is another one that's new to me, but she has been around for a few years already and um so chevy rail is extremely funny very raw and i love her she's just de definitely check her out she's a i love her work oh my god she has beautiful um knitting projects that she puts together she also spins um so yeah 
just definitely a maker that you should should follow and know. Um, also on my list this month or this session, this episode is the Bakery Bears. They are out of England, out of the UK. They are a hoot. Um, this is Kay and Dan. Um, Kay is a knitter, crocheter, and yarn dyer. So she, they, they do, she does sell some of her yarn. She also designs uh, knitting and crochet patterns. Um, Dan is also a knitter, um, although I think he learned from her. And um, he also does a lot of hiking. And during, on their on alternating episodes of their sh video show, um, on one show they will she would she'll dye some yarn and on hit on then the the corresponding week or another week later or I can't remember what their pacing is but in the next episode they do a um, a little hike um, which has nothing to do with knitting I, I, I'll give you that and I don't care because the hikes are gorgeous um, he walks around he he takes hikes through the dales and the moors around their their home and the the history and the 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 landscape is just gorgeous and so they have this I, i'm sure they have a drone that they take out with them and um it's lovely uh so i definitely go watch them they're a lot of fun they're very interesting. She has some lovely colorways that she dyes up um, and some really lovely patterns as well. And the, their banter with each other is in, so enjoyable. Which leads me to my final um, podcast to suggest, and that is Fruity Knitting. Um, Fruity Knitting is a video blog show by Andrea and Andrew Doig. They have been doing it for a number of years. It is their sole income. Um, and last October, Andrew was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor and he passed away at the end of, I think at the end of April. Um, it is a very, very sad thing because he was such a vibrant and kind and interesting person. Um, he knit, uh, he did lovely knitting, actually gorgeous color work knitting um, along with Andrea. Uh, they also have a daughter who, is a, who does lovely craft work and knitting as well. Um, so they haven't had any, a lot of recent, uh, episodes, but, um, as I said, this is, or has been their sole form of income. And so Andrea is committed to continuing the work that she and her husband did on the show. Um, but it may be some time still before she's able to produce some additional episodes. Um, but they do have 108 uh, other or past episodes which are chock full of great information, tutorials, interviews of fiber folks um, throughout Europe and around the world. Um, so definitely worth watching. Um, they are a uh, they are a lovely couple. He was a lovely man, and. Uh, she's a wonderful woman and uh, consider also giving them some kind of support as uh, this is how she makes a living. Um, so there, those are my podcast suggestions. If you uh, don't watch any of those, go check them out, see what you like. Um, and um, next time around, I'll probably feature some other other folks that I, I enjoy immensely. Um, so there, yeah. Um, so we're, yeah, we're about, 
well, we're getting close to an hour, and I really have run out of uh, fiber-related things to talk about. Um, so I really, again, thank you all so much for watching this um, this channel. Um, I do some dyeing videos. Um, I plan on continuing that in some fashion. I haven't decided exactly how I will move forward with doing dyeing videos. They've been sort of educational tutorial type things. Um, I might continue to do some playing around there just to, just for fun. Um, so we'll see uh, how that goes forward. But I definitely will continue to do my vlog, sharing my knitting, um, sharing my uh, end results of some of my dyeing, and waxing philosophical about knitting. <laughs> That's something I do, I guess. Um, so there. Uh, so be sure to check out all the other content that I have on my channel. Um, give me a shout out in the comments. Tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you want me to continue doing, what you don't want me to continue doing, uh, any of those types of things. That's why I take feedback actually pretty well. Um, share what your favorite uh, patterns are today. What's, what's on your needles? Tell me what's going on with you. Um, you can find me on social media. I have Facebook page of Great Scott Knitting. I'm on Instagram as Great Scott Knitting. I'm on Ravelry as Great Scott KCMO. And I do have a Ravelry group um, that all of those links will be in the show notes. So do please go check those out. Um, so there we are. So may you have peace in your home and the fullness of joy for all who live there.